Okay, so um, I'm setting up this uh, textiles class to try a new way to reach out to my students, hopefully in a way that they feel a little bit more comfortable and it's a little bit easier to ask questions. So that's what I'm here for today. I'm going to talk about the assignment that we had due this week. And we can also talk about the past assignments where we looked at yarns and we looked at um, staples and filament fibers. But for this one, I'm just going to start by going over the assignment and talking about how you can look at these different um, textiles and try and identify what we have going on. So I pulled out the ones that we have in our assignment. Bear with me. I was making you guys a new flow chart today. And that one I um, went ahead and just posted so that way you can have it. And I'll also post it on Canvas and then a bigger one. I'll leave you a link to as well. So as you have questions, just ask. So the first weave that you have in the assignment is swatch 14. So let's take a look at that one. I just had that one out too. So it should look something like this. Lee, okay. And with all of these, you really want to, it's like very tempting to be gentle with the swatches, but we want to really make sure that we can look at them. So you want to pull some of these yarns out from the top. Those would be the ones running this way. They're going to be the weft yarns and then some from the warp, which my warp is like not moving at all. There we go. Come out, come out, come out. So that way we have a nice edge. Now, um, all of the students that, you know, have their swatch books, because the swatches start out like this and they're cut in half, yours are going to look like this. So you want to make sure that that long way is the, the like you have it lined up so that's the part that's um, going horizontal. And that's going to make sure that you know that uh, these yarns running this direction are going to be your weft yarns and then the smaller ones going this way on the short side are going to be your warp yarns. Because a lot of times we see swatches like this and so I just don't want that to be confusing in case you have them in your book this way, then you may get a little bit confused on which is the warp and which is the wet. Okay, so as you can see, I've pulled out some so I can now see all of my ends and picks really closely. Okay, and then I want to take my pick glass and look in there. And you want to kind of tell me like, what do you see when you look at that one? For example, do you see that the warp yarns and the weft yarns are the same size? Do you see that there's the same number in the warp and the weft? Does it feel even? And that's going to kind of tell you how to go through the flow chart and kind of how to identify it. So when you're looking at this one, you can see that the yarns that are in the warp and the yarns that are in the weft are different and they're different sizes. So that tells us that it's not balanced. So in that spot where it's asking if it's balanced or unbalanced, um, you're going to say no. Okay, let's pull some of these out a little bit more. And then look here, those Silk yarns in the weft are really huge, aren't they, <laughs> in comparison? So then you want to look and kind of compare how many yarns are in are running along the warp versus how many are running along the weft. And what you're going to see is two yarns and then two yarns. I'm hoping everyone sees that. So when you see the two by two, that tells us that it is not a plain weave, which is going to be a one by one. It's a variation and that's going to be a basket weave. So I hope everyone's seeing how we identify that this one is a basket weave because we had two by two. So it was 
over two, under two, over two, under two. It actually looks like the same as this example here, where it's a two by two basket weave. You can see that there as well. Just looks a little bit different because the yarns are different sizes. So that's really pretty much it for looking at this swatch in particular. Um, I also thought we would look at a couple more though. I wanted to look at swatch 76 because I realized they don't talk about that one in your book. And so I want to make sure that one was clear. Where did you go, 76? Where you are. Okay. So here's the swatch here, 76. This one, you feel that hand, it's like really, really stiff, right? Yeah, it almost feels like crunchy. Um, this is 100% cotton though. So again, let's start when we look at this swatch by pulling out the yarns as best we can. Sometimes it helps to have a pin nearby if you have a sewing pin, but just using my nails, okay. So that way we can really see in there carefully and look at the swatch like that. And then of course we get out our pick glass. And I think when you guys look at this one, it's gonna be way more obvious if this is a classic plain weave or a variation. So if anyone kind of is having that thought, kind of think it to yourself real quick. Yeah, I think you guys probably all saw it was a basket weave. And you can see that really obviously because we've got, again, um, it looks like two by two again in there. Let me look closely. I think there's some hiding in there. Oh no, it's not two by two. I just ripped some out. It is four by four. So we can even zoom in closer. And you'll see if I take those ones that I pulled out. So here we have one, two, three, and four. Okay. And you can see this is two stuck together running across that weft. And then if we look at the warp, again, we have one, two, three, four. So this tells us that it is a four by four basket weave. Instead of being two by two, like that last one we looked at, this one we see the four by four. It's also just a really open weave. You can see that. And this is the one that's name is not in the book. This is an Ada cloth, A-I-D-A. -A. So I went ahead and entered that in for you so that you don't have to worry about trying to find that one. I didn't realize it wasn't in our text. Would anyone like to um, tell me a specific swatch that they want to look at or any other assignment that they want to look at? So that way I can focus on that. If you do, please just type it in because I want to make sure that I'm covering everything that you want to be covered. Okay. Okay. In the meantime, since we, I didn't get to post anything for last week i wanted to talk to you i think i'll just use this as the example about um yarn plies so remember that the when a yarn is spun it is twisted together sometimes they'll twist a yarn together and then twist another yarn together and then twist both of those together and those become plies so if you look at, this is a really good example of applied yarn because when we untwist it, we have one, two, three, and four. So it's almost like having four yarns twisted together and then each of those individually are also twisted. So when you're looking at does it have plies or not, you're going to have to really untwist. This one's like easy because it's so thick, but you really want to untwist to make sure that you can see each individual ply if there is one and get down to that fiber level. Okay. And you're definitely going to find those way more in a spun yarn than in a filament because in a filament, you don't really need to do so much twist. 
unless sometimes you're adding a filament and a staple together or adding multiple blends. Um, I think that's mostly it. I think let's look at one more, unless there's any requests. Uh, how about we do 63? 63 is kind of a fun one. Okay. So here's my swatch 63. It may not all be the same color, but the way you'll know you've got the right swatch, see it has that pattern in it. And that really, so now you'll remember when you see this one after we identify it, that they always have this pattern, this particular um, weave. So again, you wanna start out the same way. Let's pull out some of the warp yarns and some of the weft yarns. So we can see all of our ends and picks like that. And then we take out the pick glass and look a little bit closer. So when you are looking at the pick glass, you want to look at what is that relationship between the warp yarns and the weft yarns. Is it over one, over one? Is it over one, under two? Is it uh, two by two? Is it three by three? Is it four by four? Hopefully you're all looking at this swatch together, swatch 63. Okay, and you're going to see that this one is just um, even, one by one. So it is a totally classic, classic plain weave. However, what happens is every few yarns we do get, I'm trying to pull out that one particular one. find it with my pick glass so I can share it with you. And there it is. Well, you can't really see it, but we do get a slight variation in that yarn that's creating that pattern. If you see that there. And what this does Actually, the purpose of this fabric is to make it really hard to rip. That's a hint in what it is. So if you're trying to rip it, it's super, super strong because those extra yarns, those special yarns that are running in the warp and the weft um, give it a lot of extra strength. So this fabric, this textile is used for parachutes um, and it is called rip stop because it can't rip. So having those yarns, um, those extra yarns that are making that checker gives it this super, super strength. So I know we pulled things out, but try and actually rip it and you're gonna be like, no, it's like unrippable. So that is that one. Um, other things about this one, you can see that the yarns are also all such a great example of uh, filaments, just all like nice and long and the same length. Yeah, okay. And very balanced as well. Um, I don't have much else for this, and if anyone has any questions, I think I'll leave it be, but you know you can always message me if you have any questions or if there's anything that I was a little bit too um, fast on. And I also wanna know if this worked well because maybe this is an easier way to have um, like office hours help time than the classic or the Zoom or anything like that. So if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I will see you guys again soon. And um, again, just message me if you have any questions about the assignment. Okay, bye everybody.